up, what up, and welcome to another episode of the unofficial podcast of the National Football League, the world-famous and critically acclaimed 5-6 Kings podcast. I'm David Breen. With me, as always, my dear friend and co-host, Brayden Bowler. Brayden, how are you, man? David, I'm, uh, I am feel a little mind-fucked right now after watching this movie called Nope, directed by Jordan Peele. Come on. What, Come you don't... On. I was obviously like, we we struck magic at the end of last episode. I was going to be like, do you know what movie we did today? And then you were going to go, nope. But I was going to go, ah, we did it. We did it. Who said, who said lightning can't strike twice? Ah, that would have been so much better. Yeah, yeah. Instead, you just say the name of it. And then, uh, you know, here we are. Here we are. Man, and then nothing funny's happened. All right. I blame my, you. Yeah. You know, I blame. I the- blame you. Yeah, I don't care who you blame, unless you say I blame myself. <laughs> I was thinking about it, David. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You're about to say some other shit. I was gonna say some other shit. You're right. Fuck. All right, but, but, we saw. Nope. Here we go. Right, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if you're on our Instagram and you you can't watch our reel. Uh, I mean, hopefully by the time this comes out, you've, you'll have seen it. Oh, it's going too fast for me, man. It's going too fast. It's freaking oh me out. It's freaking God, me out. God, I got to talk really fast. That's better. That's nope, better. Nope, nope. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Nice. That's good. That's better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now I'm waiting. I'm going to try and update my phone. Maybe that's what's causing it. But right now it's just a frozen screen of me like this. So, you know, hopefully... By the time you're watching this, by the time you're listening to it, you'll have seen the real Instagram picture shit. Or, you know, let's, 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 let me take care of my shit first before we go blame an Instagram. Okay. I blame you. Well, don't don't go putting it on Instagram. All right. Guess, hey guys, guess how many people reviewed Instagram in the app store? Like went in to give it a review. And obviously a bunch of them are bots. But 23 million people. A man, let's say half of them are real people. Twelve and a half, not twelve and a half, eleven and a half million people took fucking time out of their day. And were like, I'll review Instagram. And it's good review. You have 4.7 stars. Yeah. And what's funny, Who's too. Who's doing that? Instagram never sends you like a notification either. Like, hey, write a review. Yeah, I'm like, hey, we'd really appreciate it if you reviewed it. Never. No. Yeah. I've never had Instagram yeah. be like, hey, you enjoy an Instagram? Did you did you forget we, to leave a review? We'd love it if you left us a review. I don't know a single person who's reviewed Instagram. Yeah. Neither do I. But fuck, good for them. Good for them. Good for them. It is a great app. It's, if I do say so myself. I mean, it is kind of weird. You just blame them oh. for, for our real not being up. True. But it is kind of weird. Um, if you like think for a second about the fact that there's this piece of technology, this this app, this platform where we can converse, share photos. Just living in the twenty first century is a trip sometimes. I know you're gonna underplay it, but like if you think about it, bro, no one in human history, like our all of our ancestors, they never just imagine them just sitting around at a campfire being like, you know it'd be really cool. I could send a message to someone just like around the world and the other person's crossfire. That's never going to fucking happen. Like Maybe. I mean, my ancestors aren't as close minded as yours. They would have never had that conversation. No, they would have never. No one would have shut down that idea. They would be like, you know what? That's interesting. But they would and, wonder. And it. they would have tried to. Yeah, but no one would have shut it down. I'm just saying. I don't have <laughs> closed minded piece of shit ancestors. Who'd be like, you shut up. You shut up with your dreams. All right. <laughs> what do you think? Some fucking crazy thing like that's just gonna fucking happen uh but i mean it's, it's not what our fucking podcast's about man you know you can say that about it you can say about the internet you yeah say about telephones planes like yeah. the list goes on and on but we're just on instagram it's fucking, for a it's second. fucking evolution man it is but it's evolution guys tune in next cool week time. we'll talk about how crazy the world is cool time to be alive let's talk about nope let's talk money nope by jordan peele yeah so let's we... talk money budget had to be decent What's uh? What are you? What are you guessing? Uh, hold on. I can install the update now. Oh. So I'm gonna install it. They're verifying the update. My guess is the budget was like sixty million. A little bit higher. A little bit higher. Good. Good. Seventy five. Sixty eight. Sixty eight million. Sixty eight yeah. million. Good. Good and, for and Jordan Peele. 
you know, like, I still kind of think that that's a pretty decent budget for what essentially was shown. Because the most, like, extravagant things that were shown in this film were done with, like, CGI. You know, like, some computer animated imaging type of thing. You know, so it's like... Yeah. It was it was cool, but it wasn't like... Like, if you would have told me it was, like, fucking Avengers Endgame level budget, I would have been like, That's f- they fucking... They fucked I, up. <laughs> I don't know what they spent that money on. Yeah, and and that's kind of what I'm getting to now. Like I still feel like that's it's pretty high. I mean, I, I mean they get they get like a pretty good cast, but like not enough to where like the majority of the budget yeah. would be going to them. You know, so and, I and do like, wonder. And like a pretty good cast, like the main guy is famous from Jordan Peele movies. That's what I'm saying. Like like it's Jordan Peele is probably he's, he's very a lot he's of good. That. Yeah, he's a good actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like him in everything I've seen him in. But the fact that we're only in. Literally, like, dude, they're, they're literally shooting on a lot. That that it's uh, they're shooting almost everything in the same same place. So, right there, you can keep everything on location, like all your. I mean, just just the amount of money that goes into transporting all of the crew and equipment and everything to one location to another. I mean, you, they didn't have to do that. So, like, I just still wonder, like, what the fuck did sixty eight million go to? Even though you know I like the movie. Um, I just, you know, it just seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was visually a cool movie. No, yeah, yeah. for sure. The effects, was. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't easy. Yeah. Uh, do they have Do they have opening weekend on there? They do. I hope they did well. <clears throat> I hope they made... Well, they are the number one movie in America right now. Just that's, off of the that opening. Does, that doesn't help me. Okay. The number one movie of all time? No. Just off the opening? Yeah. No. Uh, let's say 85 million. Lower. Lower. See, like, that's you got my head with this the number one movie in America thing, and that's why. Because I was gonna say fifty-five million. Mm. It's closer. Yeah. What is it? Forty-four. Forty-four million. Yeah. Yep. Forty-four point three. So, uh, I mean, good for them. I mean, they're that's, gonna. I mean, that's that's fucking opening weekend. Yeah. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Today's Tuesday. And the fact that they're number one movie in America, and they're gonna be able to like, advertise it like that. Because that's what they're. Literally putting in quotes on like the okay. The I thought you were stuff. doing it like <laughs> like normal when people do air quotes. It says like as if you disagree or oh, if okay. you disagree like your number one movie in America. No, yeah, yeah. Like all I was like, ooh, I'm what's, saying that's gonna what's like, that all about? That's gonna really help their advertising. I feel for sure. Um, oh, for sure. People yeah. be like, oh shit, I want to go see oh, that. Fuck, yeah, all right. I want to go see the number one movie in America. Yeah, I'm gonna feel left out at the water cooler. Everyone's talking about Jordan Peele movie, <laughs> and I don't know if I haven't even seen it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll get into it. There's, there's a couple things I want to talk about. What, uh, what are the reviews saying? So reviews, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes give it an eighty three percent. IMDb give it a seven point six. Common Sense Media give it a four out of five, and Google users gave it a seventy eight percent, which is go. kind of wild to me. But once again, for Google, yeah. What did Rotten Tomatoes give it? Uh, an eighty three percent. Wow! Wow! When when Get Out came out, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Like 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 Rotten Tomatoes. Get Out was very good. No, oh, yeah. Rotten Tomatoes fucking loves Jordan Peele though. It was a good That's, psychological thriller. Yeah, like I I don't know if I'd ever seen a movie that had gotten a hundred on Rotten Tomatoes prior to that. Yeah. And fucking Get Out, they're like greatest movie of all time. There you go. Have at it. Yeah. What do you get? <sighs> you know. Okay. So they he he did. A lot of good things. It's a comedy. It's a horror. It's a thriller. It's like all these different things. And I feel like at times they almost conflict ever so slightly. And I wish he would have maybe made different choices. But the overall film I felt like was entertaining. You wish it was just more white actors, (laughs) not black actors. Brayden kept saying that. He's like, (laughs) he kept looking over at me and be like, you know, the scene's good. But like, I just wish, you know, like if that was a white lady instead of this black girl, it would be better. And I was like, "Oh, dude, can't see you. Like, you can't tell me I'm wrong, David. Tell me I'm wrong. If that was Amy Adams in this movie, <laughs> you're telling me like you went top. I actually don't even like Amy Adams. Oh, that much. you're crazy. She's yeah. she's fucking fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, she's good. I just I don't know something. She's good in everything. Something she's been about in. her. She's good in everything she's been in. By all accounts, she's a very nice person. Yeah, but still. Yeah. All right. What, what, do, you, what do you give this movie? Well, all right. So. 
Just give it the number. You did your whole thing, and then we got off with the joke. Well, I feel like it's also a little too long. I feel like it could have made it a little bit more short and sweet. But I give it a right around Rotten Tomatoes. I want to give it an 8.2. 8.2? Yeah. I give it a 7. Like, okay. I felt longer than it needed to be. Yeah. But also, it didn't... I wasn't like, all right, let's wrap this fucking thing up at any point. Like, yeah. Like, I, I was... I didn't think it was amazing. No, yeah. Uh, the monkey was... I was most invested in that part of the story. Yeah. Which I, I got to imagine that's not the plan when you do this movie. Mm-hmm. And I, I was by far the most invested in that. And I For felt... the chimpanzee. Yeah. And I felt like they could have capitalized on that even more. So, like, I wish he would have made other choices that I feel like... But that's just me. Who the fuck am I? But but I just wish... Hey, 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 hey. Don't put me down like that? I, I no. Oh. No, I'm putting you down more. Oh. And saying that's my line. Oh. I say, who the fuck am I? <laughs> when I talk about movies not being good. Like, yeah. Close Encounters of Third Kind. And I'm like, but fucking, who, who the fuck am I? Steven Spielberg made it. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, But it is interesting. Well... Should we, should we jump around? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is so it, yeah, it's it's the same. There's spoilers. Yeah. If you don't want the spoilers, this is where this is where we say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you all very much. So, the, hey, hey. thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you all very much. Peace out. There we go. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did kind of like the fact that the. UFO, UAP, for anyone, like they said, like, what the fuck does UAP stand for? It's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Um, but I did kind of like that. Like, I, I didn't like it, and I did like it. The fact that the UFO was essentially, like, a conscious being, like, a, a it was alive, and it could, like, transform. Like, the, the, I, I, I kind of like that they did that. I wish, I felt like the overall film would have had a better psychological thriller aspect to it if it did still include the three foot fucking little gray aliens and it was something about mind control which i thought they were going to tie into with the whole monkey situation um was that the twist for you were like saying how they're like it's not gonna it's not what you expect there's a big twist in this movie i honestly was the twist that it was just a living being yeah i think so And, and the fact that it wasn't i liked three foot aliens i liked all of my twists better yeah yeah. So. Roots, and then the name of they do horses, and it's called Haywood Hollywood Horses. They're, it's the Haywood family. They're just outside of Hollywood. This is good. And I leaned into Braden. And I said Haywood Hollywood ho- Horses, H H H Triple H Triple H is going to be behind all of it. And he just comes out of nowhere and just yeah, and he gives <laughs> gives him the pedigree. Yeah, movie's over. Fucking spits Damn. out at it. No, that didn't it. happen. Oh, no. Update's complete. You keep talking. I'm going to see if our... Uh... So, um, just to, So the reason why I did like the fact that he made the UFO like a living thing is... So when we look into UFOs in like real life and everything, they are a lot of times like an orb light, like how we saw in... Um, uh, what's it called? The Third Kind. Close Encounters Cl- of the Third Kind. Yeah, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And... This essentially was similar. Like, when I've seen UFOs, they've always been orb lights, and one of them was, like, a translucent fucking light that you could almost see through, and it moved in this weird, energetic, like, free-flowing state, which, when this UFO transformed from, like, the disc, essentially, to this, like, free-flowing kind of thing, it was different than what I saw, but it was it was a good adaptation to, like, I feel like what people have experienced seeing UAPs, UFOs. Um, it. So it was this, cool to see that. We're, we're way off track. It's working? It's working now. Awesome. 118 people have already viewed it, which by far the most... But if this was, let's say, 100 people... Because normally we'd have about 18 to 20 at this. It's been up for a few minutes. If this was 100 people's introduction to the Five Six Kings, and if it didn't work on all ends because I needed to update my phone, I am so sorry. (laughs) Give us another chance. Please. Give us no chance. It's a fun. Watch it. It's great real. Yeah. It's, it, it was one of my favorite episodes we did last week, and this is a great part from it where I was like, yeah, it was going to be the real. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. So if, if it was shitty for you, I'm very sorry. It's up now. Check it out. Look at that. Uh, but one other thing I wanted to touch on on the, on the UFOs, 
We're yeah. not going to keep talking about Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> so we're on. I, to my knowledge, the rest of this is going to be about the movie. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So one thing I didn't really like, though, about the UFO living being thing is that there was only one. That was the first thing I didn't like. There was only one. I wish there was, like, multiple then. Um but the other thing was, it's kind of like from War War of the Worlds with like Tom Cruise, where essentially these alien being spaceships are alive and they're they're taking they're like harvesting on people, so they're like eating and sucking up the blood from people. I wish there was some like something that was more extravagant about the reason that they're here, not just to like hunt and eat us. Sweet, so you didn't like that it was only one. No, I didn't like that it was only hmm. one. Surprises me, huh? I just would have thought, you, you know, know because you, of- <laughs> you would have loved that it was a lone wolf out there just just running through. Yeah, his brain's wearing a, a hat that says lone wolf, and there's a wolf howling at the moon. And he, he just love it. He's <laughs> like, I like there's only one. Should have been a pack of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, but the shots are really fucking cool. Like, they did a good job at the way that they made the shots look like at first it was very eerie the way that they only showed like quick snippets of it like flying off into the darkness um they did a good job at like hyping you up to be scared of it um and the ending kind of had a cool feel to it almost like it was a dream and almost like it was a just like a spectacle which is what they kept kind of referring to like capturing the spectacle capture you know and um it definitely had that sense to it but the ending just felt different than I feel like you would have felt in this Jordan Peele movie. Like, it didn't seem like some crazy twist. And even the ending when they succeed and stuff, it's like, I didn't I, feel enough. I mean, I told what Braden got in my head with this. Oh, there's going to be a twist. There's going to be a twist. And at the end, she, like, there's a well thing where she gets the picture of the the UAP. And the police are showing up where she is. <laughs> And he come, and then uh, her brother comes with the guy from Get Out and Black Panther. He comes up on a horse, and I was like, "Oh, the police are about to kill them." I was like, "This is this is wild way he's going to end this movie. The police are going to kill both of them," and then they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so so fuck me for thinking that. <laughs> Which would have made you know sense though if they went with that because route because that would have made sense because it was two black people and that's not their property. What are they doing on their pro- on that property? The police have the right to shoot to kill. Boom. That's why it would have made sense. And the UFO picture would have never got out. Yeah. So it would have been a but twist it, on all. It's not like I was there and they're like, "Hey son, what are you doing here?" Yeah. This is actually, "Hey buddy, we had, we had caution tapes, actually private property." We should never have like, "Oh, sorry officer." No. It was two black people. They should just fuck it. So there's there's also um sorry to just switch from what you just <laughs> you, said. Don't, you don't want to dive into that <laughs> <laughs> so so we we get to a point to where um we we have these characters they're at a, basically a show to show the UFO and this part the show is being run by an actor who he just looks like the kind of person that. If you went to his house like to celebrate his birthday and you gave him a gift, let's say you gave him like a like a wreath, mm. like a, like a Christmas wreath, but yeah. like just not Christmas, just a regular wreath, mm-hmm. and you had the gift receipt in there, he would be like, "Oh, I I liked." He he would lie and say that he liked the gift. Yeah. So like he seems like he would lie about that. He also seems like he would take a sloppy mud pie. Oh, okay. And not use enough toilet paper when he's wiping. Okay. And that way, so like he gives you the receipt at the end because you're like, well, if you like the gift, then give me the receipt. You don't need it. And he's like, all right, fine. And you're like, you wouldn't mind if I ate the receipt? And he'd be like, what? But like, you like the gift, so you wouldn't care if I ate the receipt and then the gift didn't exist anymore, right? And he'd be like, yeah, I guess not. And then when you eat the receipt, he gets sick because he had a sloppy mud pie and he used too small of a slice to clean it. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the the actor looks like someone who would who would do all that. There we go. Uh, so I'm trying to find the exact movie right now, but they did a lot of similarities to a lot of other um, UFO alien movies. I think it might be called The Thing. Is Moneyball? Down? Right there. Captain uh, State. That looked like, uh, looked like Jonah Hill in Moneyball. Uh, 
So um, now I, that was about to be the biggest twist. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here. What does this mean? <laughs> Yeah, this list is too big. So I think I think the movie is called The Thing. And it was a movie that was done like in the 80s. Um, and as this guy gets abducted and he is like in the ship and he has to like... It's it's weird because he's like in the inner walls of the UFO that's like alive essentially. And he has to kind of like escape it and like burst out of it. And it's like he's all like icky. And it was very similar to everyone that was at the UFO show the UFO show who got abducted, they ended up in a very similar scenario where they're like in the ship, but they're like in between these walls that are like digesting them essentially. Yeah. It was the, it was like one singular living being that was coming down and it was, so it started, it was eating the horses. Yeah. It was the dude. What's the actor's name? Cause I can't. Daniel Kalua. Daniel Kalua. Or, no, or the older gentleman. No, da- Daniel Kalua. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, so like they were eating their like his horses. He runs. His dad was the stepdad from There's Something About Mary. Who when Ben Stiller goes, he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm Ben Stiller. I'm here to take Mary to the prom." He goes, "Mary left for the prom ten minutes ago with her boyfriend Woogie." And he's like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, Woogie." And he's like, "Oh," and he goes to leave. And he's like, "I'm just fucking with him." You know, Woogie had a sense of humor. And then, oh my god, have you seen There's Something About Mary? Yeah. One of the greatest movies ever. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. And her mentally challenged brother just beats the fuck out of Ben Stiller. And then Ben Stiller's like, I was giving him a baseball. He's like, you yelling at me? Are you yelling at me in my own house? He's that actor. Yeah. And Braden knows him. I swear to God, I met him. <laughs> Braden brought that up in the middle of the movie. It was so cool because I saw him. We went, So I, I used to work at a yoga studio where there was always famous people coming through. Did you ask if he was yelling at you in your own? You said, are you yelling at me? Are you yelling at me in my own yoga studio? Mid class, bro. So mid class, he's just like, like, which is exactly what he's supposed to do. It was great. So we were doing, <laughs> we were doing a yoga class. I, I, saw, I thought I saw him walk in. I'm like, there's no way that's him. And he was right behind me the entire class. And I wasn't, th- I wasn't teaching this class, ah. which would have been cool too. Yeah. I wasn't teaching it. I was right in front of him practicing. And the entire time, his breath was what you're supposed to do. It was very connected with his movement. And he was doing like long, drawn out breaths. He was like the loudest guy in the class in a good way. He wasn't like, you know. Any- well, it wasn't annoying. No, like, yeah. It's, it's what it was, he's supposed yeah. to do. And, um. And I was like, this is so fucking cool. I could basically feel this guy breathing on me. <laughs> like, it was awesome because after after the class. Um, Braden referred to him as uppity. Yeah. I said uppity. I'm just the biggest fan. And, you know, if I could just get a picture. No, no, please. no. You referred to him as uppity when you were telling me the story earlier. Oh. Like, he was just the super uppity. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> so he was he was very kind, very sweet, and he is one of the I think the most iconic voices uh, of almost like all time, like uh, of actors. Like he his think about it though, his voice is yeah, but like is the, Morgan Freeman. No, yeah, a hundred percent. There's 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 people for sure that have Walken. Yeah, there's definitely people that have yeah. more of even more iconic voice, but he's not even the most iconic black voice. <laughs> <laughs> but like you can always like whether he's on Rick and Morty or something, like you can always know that it's Keith David's voice. God damn it. He's the president. Yeah. Rick and Morty. There you go. <laughs> David, so, it, it, see? He snaps. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was really cool to uh, do a class with him and meet him, and he was very kind. But once again, he was killing in this film, too. Uh, I wish they had more of him. Yeah, but also it was important for him to die. 100%. Yeah, so for he, how he, long... he dies right away in the movie. But for Exactly. But yeah. for how long the movie was... I wish it was just one or two more scenes where they knew what was going on and then it happened to them. And then it like raised that much more of a concern. Like they, I wish they would have shown the UFOs first just a little bit and then had them happen. But it was really cool. They did a lot of, a lot of little things. So the way that Keith David dies is these, this UFO uh, creates an electromagnetic field around it. So anything um, metal or anything that could, you know, Anything that's like a solid object like that, that, you know, um, I don't know how to describe it much more than that. You want to you want to hit me with it? Metal, I think you're nailing it. OK. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, anything metal in that area is going to like freak out and jump, jump around. Like the electromagnetic field is so strong that it's moving things all over the place, like anything metal. So the horse gets stabbed uh, with a set of keys on like, the side of the hip and you don't really see what happens with it to him but the horse just kind of like walks out the 
carriage or what would you call that? Like a uh, the corral, the where, corral where it was. He was he was riding the horse. He's training the horses. Yeah, so he's riding the horse and like bringing them around the thing. And he just falls off the horse. And then we see that essentially a quarter fucking like went through his eye or like slid up through his eye. And then I think it showed in the x-ray that there was one in his skull. Yeah, he had one. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. And it was emotional. And then for a very long time in the movie, the fucking, his, his name's OJ in the movie. I'm going to call him OJ. OJ was acting as if someone who watched his dad die right in front of him in a very traumatic and bloody and gory way and he was covered in his dad's blood. Like, he was fucking quiet, shut down, as one would be. Yeah, as one would be. Um, So, like, once again, you have this, like, eerie feel for, like, what's going on and it's kind of weird how he is so shook up about it, but he is kind of, like, okay with... Like, yeah, it's for his father. Like, he explains he wants to keep on the business and, like, stay he's, there. Yeah, he's keeping the ranch. They bring they bring one of the horses like, to shoot a commercial with an actress, and, and none of them are cool about him being there. It's and, all white people except for him, and they come like, ah, what about the... Th- there was an older gentleman, the the senior, and they're like, oh, he died, so we got OJ now. And they're like, fuck, god damn it. Hey, OJ, all right, yeah, we're going to do it. And, like, they, he's very, like... He's just not saying much, but he's also like, "Hey, don't don't stand behind the horse. Watch out. Don't look it in the eye. Get get the stuff away from it." And they're like, "All right, we're ready to go." And he's like, "Ah, oh, no, the horse the horse needs a second. Needs a break." Like, I will. The actress said she's ready to go. So you tell the horse we're ready to go, as if that's a thing. I've, he's like, "Oh, they're ready to go. We're just gonna do a quick one, bud." So that that is a thing from like I've heard just rumors about certain famous, whether they're famous people or actors. Who are just like, I'll do one take, we're go, I'm ready to go, we're, we're doing it kind of now. But you can't always dictate something like that. And I just wonder well, too. Not, not with a live horse. No, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a very, like if it was, if I was on a set where I'm doing a scene with Tom Cruise. And I'm like, oh, I need a minute. And Tom Cruise is like, no, nah, I'm ready to go, let's do a take, let's go. I need to get fucking ready. Yeah. All right? <laughs> like, like, there's, if I'm a horse. The horse doesn't give a fuck who Tom Cruise is. Like yeah. he can't be like, "Hey, it's Tom Cruise. You really just got to be ready." But that's what they said. Hey, <laughs> hey, uh, make sure the horse is ready. Yeah, just tell the horse she's ready. So let's go. Yeah. And the horse, uh, his sister, then runs in because he's supposed to give the safety speech and he's not good. And then she runs in and, she and she's nails it. She's doing it, but she's also like, "I act, I sing, <laughs> yeah. I ride motorcycles. If you want my famous grilled cheese, hit me up." Like doing all this stuff, and he's not pumped about that. And then the horse fucking like kicks some shit. He, I wish she like go all in. Him kick the actress. Yeah. Like, he, like, kicked, like, a tray that have someone a, was holding, Superman. and everyone was like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> have, have a Superman predicament. Um, but what caused the, the horse um, that they're trying to signify, like, in this scene is that the horse is always going to look, essentially. Um, so they show... They, they use this ball that's supposed to be, like... I, I've never seen it on set, but I'm guessing they're using it as a reflector for light because one side is soft and the other side is just like a mirror um, for whether it's like hard or soft light, I'm guessing. Um, but they just put it... nail on it. Yeah, and they just put it right in front of the horse's eye and the horse stares right back at its eye and it gets freaked out, so it kicks the can. Yeah. And then they fire them. Yeah, they're like, yeah, maybe next time. And they also they had a fake horse, which... But this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, what? besides what I just said for the horse and everything and looking... Why did Jordan Peele make them with like people on set so like hated in this scene? Like, I wonder if Jordan Peele had like a has has had a bad experience like on set with other with other directors or producers. Like, I wonder if this is just like a shot at people he's worked with in the past. I'm sure, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> which is great. It's fucking awesome. It just shows like there's fucking assholes like that in Hollywood. Who just only, feel, only in Hollywood, right? Feel they're just so entitled. Fucking <laughs> only in Hollywood. Um, All right, can, can we talk about what I'm dying to talk about? Yeah, please. So there's this fake sitcom. It's not real. I really hoped it was real. I Me hoped too. all this exists. Mm-hmm. There's a fake sis- sitcom about a chimpanzee named Gordy. And the movie opens with, we just see the aftermath. And Gordy has just torn everyone apart on set. It is brutal. And there's a fucking little girl next to Gordy and Gordy like he's wearing a fucking he's wearing a birthday hat. He's wearing a fucking birthday hat. It was, it was his birthday. And Gordy that was the episode they were celebrating Gordy's birthday. 
And it's a whole, so they show, we'll, we'll just do everything with Gordy in it. Yeah. And the actor is the dude who had the sloppy mud pie used too small of a slice <laughs> and yeah. lied about liking the gift. And he's like a child actor in that show. And that's later on we're meeting him as the adult and mm-hmm. he's talking about it. But and he's he has fucking so much trauma about it. Like he he like talks about it as if he's a joke, and then we see him like he's closing his eyes thinking about it, and he's terrified hiding under a table from the chimpanzee. So like he has so much trauma about it that he's just he uses humor to deflect. I don't know anyone who does that. Um, but so G- Gordy, there was his birthday, and she got, I got the big gift for you, and they're like. Oh. And they open it, and balloons go just fly up out of the box, and, and, and Gordy fucking snaps. But the reason why he snaps though is because the balloons come up, and I think I think one of them or two of them hit lights nearby, uh, and they popped, and it caused him to go fucking insane, crazy. He we then just see the little girl is like barely motion like barely he's covered in blood yeah little girls on the ground like barely moving and they She's do like gordy no no and then gordy starts fucking bop, bopping and fucking biting her and shit yeah. like oh and my god the audio bro was gruesome they're they like okay we're not gonna maybe show the most gruesome shit but you're gonna hear you're it. gonna hear it you're gonna be like oh my god yeah the fucking the dad i don't understand what he was doing he the, was hiding like he was, on the he set was the actor in the scene yeah and after gordy fucks the little girl up he comes down the stairs like after, what? Yeah, this girl, the, the damage is done. Yeah, and well, I guess she's alive and later, the so he might have saved like, her life. Like on a sitcom, you have the wall where it's like they're in the home. He, the, it stairs to go probably up behind that where he was probably hiding, which just shows the fucking character of that dude. That dude went yeah. and hid yeah. while hit while the girls on set that he was acting with got eaten a fucking live. And he, he watched, and and it came down at the worst time. Yeah, he comes running down. Gordy like comes out and looks like no, Gordy, Gordy, no. Gordy, sit. Stay, Gordy. Gordy's not having any of this. He takes off. Gordy fucking runs after. We don't see this, but Gordy fucks that dude up. Fucks that dude up. And then Gordy comes over. Is wild. Gordy's fully dressed in, in, in a birthday hat this whole time. Blood dripping down his dripping fucking chin. Dripping all over his hands. He's just fucking. And then Gordy comes and like kind of has a realization. He like kind of looks around. He's like, oh. My God, I just did and then, this. <laughs> and then looks down, like sees the little girl and like like hits her foot. He's like, eh? Huh? Eh? And he thinks and she's, she's moving. He's yeah. like, oh. And he rips the birthday hat off. And he's like squatting against the couch. And then he looks and he sees the person who had the sloppy mud pie and used too small of a slice. But let me say one thing. The moment that the moment right before he sees the child, the child is looking at the at the monkey and what we see Chimpanzee. Chimpanzee. <laughs> And what we see is one of the girl's shoes, and it's standing straight yeah. up on the ground. It's signifying in some way that there is electromagnetic frequency that is f- fucking with this chimpanzee, yeah. other than just the balloons. But they didn't, they didn't like touch on that more. They should have showed. They they Not should have just... made that the whole movie. People becoming like psychotic because of the electromagnetic frequency or something, and abductions. Like it should be. Like even more, and that could have enticed even more of the psychological thriller part because it's like, okay, we can't look at the UFOs, which becomes a big part, and maybe that's part of also being brainwashed. Or I want to, I want to see Nope Two, just Gordy. Yes, that's all I want to see. <laughs> Gordy, it, it, Gordy then walks over to the kid and reach. So big thing they invented. It was like a '90s sitcom. They're saying they invented. The exploding fist bump. Yep. The kid and Gordy did. The kid's under the table and Gordy just comes up. He's like... Big, long, drawn out. And then just, just reaches out to the fist bump and the kid's like... Oh. And he slowly reaches up to do it and right as their fist touch, Gordy gets shot in the fucking head by the police because you can't... Yeah. You, you can't just brutalize an entire set of humans and then live if you're a chimpanzee. But like right in front of the kid. Yeah. So that's who this adult is later. Like that much trauma. Yes. All of that, and then you're like, okay, okay. This is chimp. He had a relationship with the chimp. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay. And, and the chimp recognizes him. Was like, I'm not gonna hurt you, bud. Hey, you and me. And he's like, yeah, there we go, Gordy. There's the Gordy I know in the boom. And it- now to tie to relationship, Daniel Kaluuya's character, who's OJ, the one that is the son of the of D- K 
Keith David, who also, does. Also, when they on the set when they introduce him as OJ, the woman's like, OJ, <laughs> like 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 OJ Simpson. Yeah, no, and, that's and literally like, what they refer to. And he's like, yeah, o- Otis Junior. My father was Otis Senior. Yeah, <laughs> like, like it's... what the fuck? Yeah. Um. So the relationship between Daniel Kaluuya's character is that he is selling horses for only like renting them, really. But they're saying I'm going to sell he's, it he's and then selling I'm gonna them buy and them wants back. to buy them back. Yeah, but he's selling them to the dude who, who... had the sloppy mud pie. You <laughs> too small to slice. Thank you. And um, when they go to kind of negotiate and everything like that, he brings them into this back secret room that shows memorabilia from the set. And one of them is the shoe. And he, you could tell... Nostalgia. Nostalgia. But, but no, it's memorabilia, though. I do. I yeah. do. do you remember that, <laughs> no, though? Yeah, I, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, David, I'm, I'm I right try, this time. I tried <laughs> to think of what the word... I, I said, the second you said memorabilia, I was like, ah, oh, what was the word? What was the fucking word that he did? I was this, like, yeah, there we go, there we go. Stop. This is where I redeem myself right here. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so he shows, like, this memorabilia and stuff. But you could tell that he understands that there is some connection between... UFOs, or at least that's the way he was making it seem, and kind of what happened in the past. Or at least, I don't know, from the way that he was showing the memorabilia and the way that he was talking about this show that he has, that he wants him to come see. He knows about the UFOs that have been showing up every Friday for six months now. Who knows about that? I, I, I mean, I could definitely be wrong. You could definitely be right. I, I didn't, I just didn't make that connection. Yeah, so he didn't say yeah. it, but the way, but just like little mannerisms of of his body language the way that he was you know like remembering it and like he never said it outright but the way i took it was that there is a phenomenon going on that he isn't aware about but doesn't fully understand but i think he is connecting that somewhat with the sporadic thing that happened between him and the monkey on set and the shoe because he they made a point of making him focus on the shoe standing straight up. Yeah. You know, and, and like, that's and he, the and weird thing. And he had thing. that in the glass case where the shoe was standing straight so up. So it's important to him, plus yeah. all the other things that refer to the monkey and stuff. So right. I think he truly believes that the reason that that monkey ended up going ape shit, I believe, is because... Chimpanzee. Chimpanzee. God, which, is, which is also, it's in the ape family, and it went ape shit. So there we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I liked all that, and I was thinking, like, so... And we're going to kind of go over the the scene next, I feel like, would be a good part. But I felt like, oh, holy shit, dude. This is going to be these, these like, aliens that are in this ship that are abducting people, but they're also using the electromagnetic frequency or something else to uh, mind control people and make them do fucking crazy shit so that maybe it's easier for them to abduct them or whatever. I don't know. I thought we were going to explore that a little bit more so i don't know what scene you want to go into just take us into it so what i want to go into now is the scene where daniel kalua is going and visiting his um where the horses stay and because there's lights that flicked on out of nowhere and he's like and and like a rate was it a radio that went on to or something or just like a noise from the lights it was like uh sprinklers okay an irrigation system yeah 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 so he go, he's like, what the fuck? So he goes over there and he turns the lights off and he like walks back and then the lights turn back on again, the sprinklers. And, and he looks back and we see this three fucking four foot, what we think is, you know, a fucking alien moving in like the scariest fucking way. And then another one leans out and they both lean out in the same exact way as if they're like synchronized yes. telepathically or something. And I was like... And so, and so here's the thing. He had seen... He had seen, like, the saucer or whatever he thought it was up yeah. in the sky. he's already seen the saucer. He had saucer. seen at that point. They had gone and gotten... Yeah. They went and got the cameras at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they went and got they, the cameras. They had gone and gotten cameras. Like, they were setting... They were like, we're going to get footage of this fucking thing. And this is for sure happening. Yeah. And then he's in there. So he pulls out his phone when he sees the first one. And oh, and they start walking like, after him in like, a, in, like, a weird way. I'm like, oh. But here's the... He, he pulls out his phone. He's like, I'm going to videotape this. And then the second one comes, and they start moving weirdly. And he goes, nope. Nah. Nope. Nope. Fuck this. Fuck and this. And starts getting the fuck out of the barn. At this point, especially with everything else that's happened, I'm like, I am in love with this fucking movie. And then this is where I felt like the movie, it, 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 it didn't get bad. It just it just took a turn that like I maybe wouldn't have made. So he's around the corner. 
and like the things are there and the one's poking out and then we see another one coming like upside and I'm about down. To lose my mind. <laughs> coming upside down like from the ceiling and, and he, he turns just, just fucking fuck, <laughs> fucks it up. Yeah. And it falls, hits the ground hard and it takes off the mask and it's It's a fucking the, kid. It's the dude who had the sloppy mud pie and too small of a slice. It was his kids were there. Yeah. Because they had, his sister had stolen one of their fake horses earlier and was a fun little yeah. thing where she was lying about having it. And, and all like, that yeah, stuff. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, yeah. when he punched him, I kind of, I laughed and like, I, I thought it was kind of funny and everything, but I'm like, okay, well, there's still aliens. What fucking, twi- like, what what more could this be? And then we find out the UFO is like a living, sentient fucking thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I just still wish... I felt like it was a cool idea, but the way the rest played out, I felt like wasn't as enticing and you couldn't do more with it as you could have if these aliens actually existed. And that's just kind of like the way, I don't know. I felt like they could have played more and maybe done a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard to say because it's like, you know, you don't know how they're going to end up playing out the rest of the film doing that. Uh, I just felt like they could have maybe made stronger choices. I don't know, because that's kind of hard to say, too. They made strong choices. Yeah, and, and they chose to have it be... Like, that That was the tr- that was the direction he wanted the film to be. He wanted it to be, it's just this one living thing up in the sky. Yeah. Like, that was, that was, that was the strong choice he made. He was yeah. like, it's not going to be aliens like you've seen in any other movie. It's one, it flies. It, the, it's, it's not a ship with aliens on it. The alien is the ship. And I feel like... Transformers. I feel like right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, but but in a more like a free flowing, energetic fucking state. It, yeah. It's not like robotic or anything. No. It it's, looked like a flying saucer. It's like an organic. Being. And then later, it looked like fucking like origami, like like floating ribbons and yeah. stuff. Like it looked, it, it it was visually spectacular. Yeah, it was. No. Um, I think since this is like the mid turning point of the the film, I think this is a mid turning point for the podcast. Want to take a little break? I would love to, man. I would love to. We'll be right back. And we're back. We're back. So there's another, there's a guy, they go to an electronic store when they get all the camera equipment. I like this guy. He, so they go and they check out, his name's Angel. And his hair was really cool. It was, yeah, he had like blonde highlights in his hair. <laughs> um, and they go to check out. And he's like, would you like to sign up for a credit card? And then you go, no. And they're like, all right, would you like technical support to come out and help install? And they say, no, thanks. He goes, all right, declining technical support. And then OJ goes, well, I mean, how how hard is it? And he's like, I mean, for me, it's easy, but like, you're not going to fucking be able to do it. <laughs> Instead of just like that. Yeah. He's like, you're not going to fucking be able to do it. And they're like, all right. Makes yeah. Sense. yeah. You you come do it. So he goes and helps, but then I love he he gets out there and he's like, "Hey, I didn't know you're all the fucking way out here, <laughs> all stuff." And then he opens his thing and literally just ah, like an angry yell. And OJ goes, "Oh!" And like the horses start going. He's like, "Hey, don't don't do that shit. What are you? What's happening?" And he's like, "Sorry, I just I was in a long term relationship. And she broke up with me." Yeah, I know it's cliche, but I thought she was the one. You know, she could be on the show on the CW, and she fucking left me. Actors, fucking, fucking CW model. Yeah, he said her name. He shows him a picture. It reminds me. I used to live at Legacy Place at an apartment there. It was me and two buddies of mine, and this guy James was our landlord. Like he owned. It was a townhouse. Okay. And he owned the three bedroom townhouse we lived in, which had to be fucking worth a lot of money. Uh huh. And he was over there. There was something broken, and he had like a maintenance guy that he brought over. And he and I hadn't talked much. And okay. he comes over to me and just like I'm I'm on the couch. Some I had to be there when he got there. And he comes over to me and just shows me his phone. And it's a picture of a girl. And he says Her face is like a six and a half, but her body's a ten, so she's an eight. Right? And I said, Yeah, man, the math adds up. He's like, Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, I'm fucking her. He was like forty five years old. Huh? I was I was huh? I was 19 or 20 at the time. I was very young. I don't want to be a part of any of this. I just go, yeah, good for you. 
Dude, you must be go for you fucking an eight. Good you, job. You must be one of the coolest guys I've yeah, ever met. But like, <laughs> like what was he expecting? He shows you to say? me the picture, and he wanted me to either agree or, or disagree. Yeah, I get like, you know, her face is more of a seven, and her body's only like a nine, so like it's still an eight. But okay, yeah, but the yeah. average is off. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, like, like I think that's what he was hoping. I, or or just what I did. And I was just like, yeah, no. You see him six that months makes later, and he's like. Fucking, he's like still fucking her, still no. fucking that eight. Or he's not, and, or he's, just, and he's just that? distraught. He gets there and starts screaming like fucking buddy. Yeah, I'd, I'd be like, I don't want to deal with any of this, man. Listen, man, I just, I just want to pay you the rent <laughs> yeah, just, and live here. Let me give you passive income, please. Yeah. Let me just give it to you, and I'll live here, and then that'll be our only relationship. Yeah, we don't need more than that, you and I. Oh man, yeah, that's great. Where were we though? Where? How did that? Come? Oh, cause he's showing her the, in the picture of her. Yeah, he's like, well, no, watch for. Her. Yeah, Daniel's like, no. like, what the? F- <laughs> what, what, what do I say? <laughs> but so he he shows up there and he sets up the cameras and he they tell him not to watch it, but he watches it and, he's, and he sees the shit that's going on he, and he's the one who notices that there's the, a cloud that, that just hasn't moved, doesn't move, which and, is and he shows up and he's and he looks, he's just staring like, hey, well, what are you doing here? He's like, it's real. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you haven't fucking noticed on your cameras? And then he goes and shows him. He's like, tell me when you see it. And like, he's fast forwarding. And then OJ's watching. He goes, oh shit, I see it. Like, that cloud's not moving. Yeah. Like, all the other clouds are moving. And you reminded me of one thing that I want to say before we get too far ahead. It's not the N word, is from it? The, no. Okay. Thank God. I, uh, I, I will walk out that door. <laughs> <laughs> but from the, the previous scene when, what's his name? You got a good name for him. OJ? No. Oh, the. Guy who had the sloppy mud pie yes. and used too small of a slice. Yes. When you first walk into his office, there's like a bunch of little Easter eggs kind of around. One of the main ones that I saw that also point to the fact that he's aware of the aliens and everything is there's an owl. And the real significance of owls hoot, 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 hoot. is it's very prevalent hoot. in people who claim that they've been abducted. And the reason why is because they say when like people who say they've been abducted, they say that they remember the only thing they can remember is a is kind of like a dream, but they don't feel like it was a dream and they look out their window their bedroom window and they see an owl and they connect eyes with the owl and then it's almost like they're put into like almost like a trance. Um and that the owl the owl is supposed to um represent like a three foot gray alien with big eyes. It's supposed to be a representation of the grays. The grays? That's what they call the little three foot gray okay. aliens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They there call him the Grays. The yeah. Grays. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were talking about the Gray Man with Ryan Gosling and <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> they showed that twice, didn't they? Oh, yeah. They did. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> they we, saw, we saw that preview twice today. They didn't want to show the new Black Panther trailer. They wanted to show that twice. And, and you know, Gray Man looks all right. Yeah, it looks all right. right. Yeah. I hope they make it realistic. It did not look good. So, like, yeah, go in with that mindset and then see how you're let down. Ryan Gosling is, like, running on a deteriorating... Not, not Ryan Gosling. It's, um... It's Ryan Gosling. No. It was Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. From Deadpool, Ryan Gosling? Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Oh, yeah. It's right. absolutely Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling is the guy in Remember the Titans who he just keeps getting burned. He's a cornerback. And Gary's like, you got to guard him. He's like, you're too fast for me, Gary. I can't keep up with him. And then the fucking running backs got to go play DB because Ryan Gosling's a complete liability. <sighs> it's like someone had to say it. Yeah, fucking Petey's like, Petey Jones, running back. The running back, y'all. And they're like, ah, oh. Um, yeah. so we're, we're, but Ryan Gosling's <laughs> like running on a fucking building that's collapsing as he's doing it. And then he just jumps and it's seemingly into the that hot chick who's in so much stuff now. Anna de Umalisis. Yes. First thing I ever saw her in was Knock Knock with Keanu Reeves. You ever seen that movie? Yes. Yeah, we're doing that movie at some point on here. Yes. My brother told me there's like an older version of Knock Knock. That's way more gruesome. We're doing that too. We're gonna go double knocks at some point on the five six yeah, kick podcast. Man, that makes you have trust issues, and I already got those. So you can't can't trust anybody. But uh, she's but she's great. And what's crazy too is even I think in I think that film in particular it could be a. Di- I'm sorry, David. I just I talk with my hands sometimes. I'm pretty sure it's that film though, where it was one of knock, her knock. first. It was either that film or one other one where it was one of her first film Th- credits. Ding dong. That's it. 
<laughs> um, but she could barely speak English, and she had to learn English to basically play the role. She spoke very broken English in Knock Knock. Yeah. So no. it might have been one of her first ones. Um, there we go. Yeah. But she's great, and she's blowing up. Yeah, she is. Good yeah. for her. Yeah. You know, got to blow up. Mm -hmm. Got to blow up. So there's this other guy. So the, the, the guy from Fry's, he's there. He's along for the ride the whole time. He's not like the most important person in the world. He's just sort of there. He's like that comic he's, relief. Yeah, he's and, funny at times. Yeah. He, they, I assume they just couldn't get Rel to do this because Rel's too big now. And they were like, well, just have a white kid. So now I think we should go into the scene with Rel. No. Because Rel's not in it. Before we get to... Um... The other camera Rel? guy. No. Okay. But I think we should get into the scene where basically it's like the turning. I disagree. So there's okay. this other cameraman. <laughs> Let's go. What's it? <laughs> so the scene where um, they feed the they find out that it's that the UFO it, it's trying to hunt and it's territorial. And that's what Daniel Kalua says. He's like, oh, OJ. it's OJ. He's like, it, it's territorial and it's hunting and it's trying to feed on us, essentially. Um, so they try to trick it and they do by using a fake horse that has a kite string ribbon thing on the end of it. Um, and they feed it essentially and they fake out the UFO and it eats it and it gets pissed the fuck off. So it comes back. Cause it, it's, it's like a big, like it can't eat something that's like fucking not real. Yeah. It, it'd but be, it'd like, be like me trying to eat the couch. Like that's it's, one thing that no... I somewhat had a problem with. This thing is intergalactic and it could fucking, you know, still need substance, man. You know, like the couch is big. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I wouldn't, it looks like a horse. Yeah. But you'd think it'd be able to be like, oh, this is a plastic thing. That's not a biological you know, it th you think you'd be able to read heart rate for fucking God's sake? I don't know if it's traveling from like <laughs> one mean. planet to the other. I'm I'm picking on it right now, but yeah. so it they fake it out, it eats it, and it basically throws it up, uh, and it throws it up right into OJ's car, which is a funny funny. But this is during the part where it gets pissed off, so it comes over and it basically creates like a thunderstorm, and it's raining down, and it's just throwing bullshit onto the house, and Kiki. And the other character with the blonde highlights, they're in the house and they're freaking the fuck out. And the house as well. Kiki? Is that the actress's name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what her uh, real name is. It's OJ's sister. Her name's M in the movie. Yeah. And they're freaking the fuck out because not only are is the UFO throwing physical objects like fucking tractors or some shit like onto the house or what, what, what was it like a. A uh, wheelchair? wheelchair. Wheelchair, yeah. And like other things as well. Which, I mean, which, you know whose wheelchair it was? No, actually. So oh. they're doing this big. Uh, we gotta we'll go just, back. We'll jump it. The guy who had the sloppy mud pie and had too small of a slice, he saw it and he knows it eats the fucking horses. So he's got one of the horses in like a glass thing and he's like, we're gonna, we're gonna draw it out. You folks, and it's sad. There's only like thirty people there. Yeah, you folks are gonna get to see something awesome. There's a flying saucer. It's gonna come. It's gonna eat this motherfucking horse. It's a spectacle. Like, oh shit! Yeah. He's like, and I'd also like to th like to welcome. Her name starts with my, an R. My co-star, my first ever crush. She was my co-star on whatever show where the chimp fucked everyone. It was the little girl that the chimp fucked up. It didn't kill her. Yeah. And she has like a thing. She's in a wheelchair and she has a thing over her face. Because the because, monkey ate her, the chimpanzee there ate her face. And we see like wind comes and it comes up and her, her face is all fucked up. Yeah. But. Which is great. Right now we got a thunderstorm in the back. So it might just add to the scene since there's like a fucking thunderstorm. There we go. <laughs> um. She, well, she's in. Um, we're talking about the other scene, actually. So, so and she's, she's in, in a crowd. wheelchair. She's in a wheelchair in the crowd. Yes, and as the UFO approaches and approaches early, which is weird, and it's not the usual. Um, it blows up her face cover, and you see her face. Huh. Everybody looks up at it. Jesus, David! I thought you were going to tell me my fucking huh. ceiling's going to collapse or something. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks up at the UFO. Yeah. And then it fucking just swallows all of them up. Swallows everyone. So it makes sense that the wheelchairs, they, the fucking UFO spit out the wheelchair at the house. It's basically spitting up everything it could not consume. Also, also blood, it looked like. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that was next. So after what was initially water and like. You know, I guess it just sucks. It sucks up everything. So you see it spit out dirt whenever it sucks someone up. It, like, spits out things it can't consume. Or off. Off, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so it spit out water at first, but it was like part of almost like a thunderstorm. Maybe it was just a thunderstorm and it was just blocking it. So it was running off the side, but it made it seem like it brought the thunderstorm. Right. What did you think I meant when I set off? Because you agreed with me. Well, like, I don't know. It's... You said suck someone up. And I said, or off. <laughs> I didn't take it like that. And you no. were like, or <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a freak. Maybe he's just trying to get off, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That, I mean, that would have been the twist. Yeah. It's just fucking That would have been everyone. a better twist than down nothing. You go up into the UFO and it's just, it's just orgasming everyone. Yeah. It's um, like, all right, all right, you can go. You can go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of here now. It just kicks him out. Um but it starts spewing fucking blood all over it, which is a cool, fun sight. Another cool thing that I never said is if you go back to the movie Signs or you go back to UFO alien stories, there's always this fucking house. It's the same fucking house in like every alien story, which is two story. What kind of design? Which is like a modern, or not modern, but like an old, you know, like a sexy, a, yeah, sexy, just normal two story house. It looks like the house in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where the kid leaves to go be with the alien kids. There you go. It, it looks, it looks just like that house, and it's the exact house as well from the movie Science, which we have not covered yet, but nor will we. We will someday. Huh. Yes, David. No, I. I account for 51% of the decision making on the Five Six Kings podcast. <laughs> I get one choice every fucking three weeks. Nope. Right? <laughs> nope. We're over. See, <laughs> what happened last time you made a choice? I don't know what happened. We did Thor instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so, yeah, it's pissed off and it fucking scares the living shit out of Kiki and the dude with the highlights. Um, as well as Daniel. Daniel pulls up in the car and it drops okay. the. F- OJ and it drops the fake horse like in through the windshield, which just shows that this UFO's got good precision. But OJ realizes during that moment, yep, you can't make eye contact with it. Yeah, he's realized when you look at it, it comes after you. So he's keeping his head down and it's it's avoiding him. So like everyone looked up at the fucking thing and it came and got him, but it didn't get the horse. Yes, it didn't. Horse name is Lucky. Yep. And it's because the horse had its head down. I guess the horse knew. Which is another big part, too, because there's a bunch of horses. This is like a big horse farm kind of thing. And only the horses that have been abducted are the ones that are outside, not in the horse stables. Whatever you call it, stable, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's like another uh, signifying fucking thing that shows that. Yeah, you can only do the eyesight. But it also shows that they've been showing throughout the film that horses will just instinctively look, you know, and that they can't help it. Kind of like a deer in the headlights kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so then after this, Kiki and Buddy with uh, highlights in his hair, they're like, let's get the fuck out of here. Um, but Daniel is like, no. Call him OJ. OJ, sorry. <laughs> yeah. OJ and sounds. M. M. There we go. Uh, yeah, he's like, no, we got to, they want to they wanna get on Oprah. Yeah, like we want to get that Oprah shot because Kiki um, is trying to be like an act. She's trying to be famous, and and they're finding this as an opportunity to not only help the the farm and the, like the career uh, of the Hollywood horses, but also her personal career. So they're like, you know, they came to a conclusion they're going to work together to try and capture this on film and become famous. Yeah, which yeah, is great. Yeah, make money. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, sounds like a win-win. Imagine being on like every talk show and like you don't have to do anything else for like the rest of your life just because you got this one thing on film, yeah. you know? Like there's going to be documentaries, so many things you could sell, books, everything, you know? It's So yeah, so that was like their plan. Um, so they contact the main cinematographer from the initial set in the beginning of the film and at first he like declined, right? And then they called him again and where he was working was one of the dopest fucking they, like they said they said they want to get the impossible shot yeah and he said but that's impossible <laughs> i'm like there jordan great writing <laughs> well, get the impossible shot but that's impossible yeah it made that cinematographer look like a fucking idiot um <laughs> but that's i guess what intrigued him as well yeah he saw so on the news they're saying the people were missing and blah 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 and something strange is happening out here and it was alluded to that it could have been ufos yeah and then he was like i want to get i want to get out there yeah this but i have to touch on again shit he's in an editing room that is all glass and he has just 
green, lush fucking plants on the outside, and you're like, wow, I want to live there. Um, but yeah, he seems like a... How do I say? Because it's not like spiritual is the word I want to use. I want to. I want to be like near the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to. Ha- like, I want to look out. and I want to see the ocean. But what? What kind of sense do you give this guy? Because I feel like that plays into his but, character. But not that I want to. Not that I want to live there. Oh, okay. That wasn't the sense. You said that you see that and you're like, oh, I want to live there. I do. I want to say, you see that and you're like, oh, I want to live there. I don't. Yeah. I see that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but to his character, what does he seem? Like, I was going to almost say spiritual, but it's not that as much. It's There's something about him. Just weird. Yeah. I'll just say weird and leave it at that. Yeah, but but we'll tie it together, essentially. Um, so it comes, what did he bring with him? You're talking about the camera? What did he bring with him? Say it. So he brought an actual film camera. Come on. Come huh. on. Well. I told you this motherfucker would bring a camera that didn't run on electricity. And then they go, mm. uh, M-, go. M says that, and then her and OJ are, OJ's like, fuck you, dude, let's go. That was one of my favorite. I was like, oh, here we go. They're fucking pumped about this. Yeah, it's fucking great. They, they had good chemistry. Yeah. So they have, they set up, they have wacky waving, inflatable arm flailing tube men all over the place. They stole like 40 of them. They stole car batteries. And the reason why is because when the UFO comes around, the electromagnetic field throws off any batteries. So the batteries that are using, that they're that are in the, whatever you call the things that inflate. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men. Yeah, but the, the device that inflates the, the wacky tube man. Harvard. I know you can say it. You're pretending the like. The order. You can, you're pretending like you <laughs> can't <laughs> say it. As if that adds something to the episode. Everybody would be like, ah, oh, brain what, what, can't say it. Wacky, inflatable, me- I'm dead ass. I'm, I'm, I'm stumped. It'll come up. Just keep moving. Okay. It'll come up again. So they use that as like an indicator. They space them out like probably every 500 feet or so um, just to show that like, oh, if it goes uh, and deflates, we know somewhat of where the UFO is. Yeah, because we, um, we, the UFO is killing the battery. The battery's yeah. stopping. Yeah. Uh, so they had that set up basically on the ride in into their farm. Not a farm, but fucking whatever. Yeah. You get it. And uh, what was I going to say? So doing that. He's riding a horse and he puts a fucking thing over the horse's face. So the horse can't look. Yeah. Which is smart. And he's riding and like his, he's going to be out. Uh, OJ is going to draw it out. She's watching the cameras in the house. The kid from the electronic stores. And the cinematographer, they're up on a ridge where they're doing the thing so they can get the shot of it once it comes out. Yeah. They have their, their fucking, they're a well-oiled machine. And then a dirt bike comes out. <laughs> this is kind of funny. He has a crazy helmet and he talks just so strangely. Yeah. M comes out. To where I thought, I was like, is he a fucking alien? Like, what's what's happening here? And then I'm like, again, this must be like Jordan's personal experience, which we come to find out. He's a TMZ employee. Yeah. So he's trying to, you know, he must have heard about this because they get fucking news first, I guess. Yeah. Well, he heard, he heard that the fucking people went missing. Yeah. He was like, well, let's go see what that's all about. Yeah, exactly. And she's like, oh, fuck, it's TMZ. And then he's just flying, like gunning it through the dirt fields and stuff. But she lets him know, too, like, hey, we're filming. This is, like, private property. And yeah. he's like, I don't, don't give a fuck. Like, fuck that, all right? Yeah. He's white. And he's like, you're a black woman. I'm a white man. You think the cops are going to show up and be like, oh, you're trespassing on this black woman's property? Bullshit. I could do what I want. And he just guns it. And he's going. And the dude from the electronics store is watching. And he sees that the wacky, waving, inflatable, arm-flailing tube men are down and the guy's just going and he just goes, well, that's not good. He's like, what, uh, what do you guys think happens when an electric bike goes, comes, is uh, an electric bike that's going 60 miles an hour comes to a dead stop. And then we see from like a far away, just the bike just stops and, and he, he goes, flies flying. off yeah. of it. And OJ is the only one who feels any sense. Like he's like, Oh, and like goes over to help the guy and everyone's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> What do you do? Don't be an idiot. Don't come on. Leave him. Like he's like, I'm going over to help the guy. Yeah. And then this guy sucks. 
this guy is not worth helping. He gets off, and the guy's like, uh, where's did, my camera? Did you get it on video? He's, he's like, you get it on video. He's like, get a picture. Get, get, don't know. Don't help me up. Get, get a picture first. And he's trying to help him up, and then the UFO is like over them, and he's like, ah, He sees fuck. in the metal fucking reflecting Oh, his helmet. eyes. His eyes, and then it comes out, and he goes, fuck, sorry, man. So he sees in the reflection, and he's like, sorry, man, I, I gotta go. <laughs> well, so his eyes in the, that's why it came. No, because yeah. his eyes reflected off of the guy's crazy-looking yeah. fucking spaceman helmet. No, yeah, yeah, but that's also yeah. how he noticed it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, so that's and he gets on the horse and starts riding off. It fucking sucks that guy up. And another thing know. that he did is he put the hood up. He has these green giant things on the back of his head to try and I think trick the UFO that it is looking at him. Yeah, I, that, that's how I took it. Yeah, and that he's gonna like have it follow him. Up to the destination where they can get it on film, right? Yeah, that's... yeah. There's a part though too that I don't remember them saying in their meeting, but as he's having the UFO chase him, there's this little shed that he jumps off the horse last second. So what, what does he do before that though? The flags. He oh, throws yeah. out like a parachute that has the flags on it. Yeah, that it ate earlier and it didn't fucking like the flags. And the flags were like hanging from its thing for a while. Like the flags fucked it up. It couldn't get it in. It That's how they get could it see the it in out. the cloud too. It would yeah. just like hang from the UFO. Yeah. So he he flung that as Did if he put to, it on the back of the horse. Put it on the back of the okay. horse. And I think it was like because the thing knows about those. He said earlier. He's like, oh, it's not gonna want to eat those fucking flags again. That's for sure. Yeah. So he knew putting it on the back like, of the horse. Yeah, he's like, I'll hop off, and the horse is gonna be safe because it's not gonna eat the flags. Yeah, and it's gonna be like, oh, I don't want it. It's it's one of those. It's one of those fucking horses again that I ate. And they did a good job at, at computer animating this fucking UFO because when it gets really close, you can tell. Oh, this isn't like a metal flying saucer how you would think. You could tell it's like an an organic biological fucking thing. Like it almost has skin texture rather than like a metal look to it. Yeah. It comes down they, they get the shot. I think. They get I, the, they, they I get didn't, the shot. I did not understand the cinematographer here. Why He's, would you record if you know that you only have so much space in the film? Why would you record the entire ride up if you know you're not catching the UFO on film? But so then they put the new fi- film in. Yep. And did it did they get the shot there? They did, but but very briefly. It was just like the last frame. And so he then said, they're all like, oh, did we get it? Did we get it? And he's being quiet, and he like packs up and says, you don't deserve the impossible shot, exactly. kid. So he has, this is what I'm saying. It's It's almost as if they're trying to make him seem like he's not spiritual, but has like a weird spiritual sense about, about reality and he thinks because they're he's showing how he's done documentaries on a bunch of animals and stuff like that and he's always gotten impossible shots and he i guess they're trying to portray that he has a sense like a feel that this shouldn't be shown to people okay because my initial thing when he said that was fuck you guys i'm cutting you out and i'm gonna make all of the money off of this no but that, that's no, what but, i thought too at yeah, first yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah but then that obviously wasn't the case because he stopped and like looked up at it so he goes this. up to like the top he, of the mountain that they were kind of sitting on this peak ridge and he goes up to the top of it and he just sits there and looks at it and he knows he's like yeah, sacrificing he's, he's himself. committing suicide to do this yes essentially but the weird thing is he records it all the way up until he's fucking dead essentially well, that's his job but my point is, did he think that the camera was going to survive and the film yeah, was, was going to survive? And then no if idea. so, why did he say what he said? Yeah. If we don't deserve the impossible shot, why did you go sacrifice yourself while still filming it? I felt like either I'm not understanding it or that was maybe not written the in a way that should have portrayed something that they were trying to show something else. You know, I felt like maybe they kind of missed the mark for what they were trying to show in that. Or they, or the they scene? didn't, and we just don't get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know who? You know who would get it though? Gordy. <laughs> Gordy did. Gordy. Gordy would have th- understood. You, th- you, it. Thought, you thought that was gonna be Nutty Professor? Didn't you? Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but Gordy's just as Nutty good. Professor <laughs> would. <laughs> Eddie would be like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" I know it's exactly like, "Here's what, what it is, guys." Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 He would wave the UFO down and be like, "I know what's going on, bud." Yeah. So they then they do a thing where 
she's trying to leave on the the dirt bike, the electric bike, and she can't because the, the UFO's at a point now where it's like I just don't give a fuck. That's how I feel. It's it's like blown up all over the place. It's fucking crazy. There's like fire coming out of it. Like you're you're watching this and you're like, what the fuck is happening on my screen right now? This is bananas. Yes, and. I did like it, but now it's there's a completely different feel from it. Like there was a point where it's like, oh, now it's super hostile. Then it like transforms, and you're like, w- am I supposed to fear it the way that I just did? Because now it seems like it's this spectacle, like they were talking about, and it's like this beautiful, like free flowing, energetic it was. fucking it was, it being. Was, it was fucking amazing looking, and the way it's showing like certain things, like what it's about to suck you up with kind of thing. You're like, oh, wow, this is like a godly fucking figure kind of thing that I'm not supposed to, which is cool that that uh, Jordan, you know, he decided to go with something where it, it's um, it breaks the mold of the usual way that we would think about these scenarios because not to bring it back to me, but like the UFOs I've seen with other people were were something that you would never you would never think that that's what it's supposed to be. I know you're going to laugh. I no, 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 I'm laughing because in your mind you were like David's going to say that I've never seen a UFO, so I'm going to say <laughs> with other people. Other people saw it with me. Like like immediately you're like I got to get out in front of this. <laughs> well, even for other people because I, I I do think a lot of people don't fucking believe that I've seen and you saw it with fucking Hoff. Hoff pretended like he had an assistant when we the, called him the other day. The one that- like, oh, this is assistant. It was great. Hoff, Hoff, hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we're not we're not moving on. Don't ever change, man. That was that was yes. my favorite thing you've ever done. I fucking love it. Don't that. ever change. Um but yeah, uh I actually don't know if Hoff was there, but it was eight people from Gardens that I was with. It was at Corbin's house. It was fucking yeah, bunch of fucking David, Gardens High School. David Straley. Yeah, he, he didn't win. He didn't win Best Guest on the Five Six Kings. Now did he? He didn't. No. Was Fenor there? I think so. Actually. Yeah, and Fenor will be like, I didn't see that shit. Yeah, brain's making that shit up. And yeah, eight, that's character. Eight people, and what we saw though was nothing like you would ever think for a UFO. It seemed like a free flowing energy that's translucent you can almost see through it doesn't have like a, a border like a, a physical shape to it and it's moving literally like like with this weird flow and it just moved like that all the way up until you couldn't see it anymore and it was red like it was the weirdest thing if i was to describe if you were to see it it was mars but you it was like a rectangle and it was just flowing yeah mars is rectangular oh ah, yeah but i'm it, it was nothing like what you would think a ufo would be and it was literally like an unidentified flying object, not like a, oh, this is a, a silver sphere fucking thing that has propulsion and can move in certain way. Like this thing was just so bizarre. It, it would it'd be hard to put an actual explanation on it. But well, that's because it didn't happen and you don't have that active of an imagination. So you couldn't explain it. Uh, but yeah, so, so this is he, very, yeah. So she she's on the dirt bike and the dirt bike's not moving because the thing's right over her. It's an electric bike. So OJ, he's on the horse, and he just stares up at the UFO. He wants to draw it over to him, and like it starts coming his way, and he's like, "Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here!" They have a nice little moment, and then she drives off, and then she makes a point, like she looks back at it and looks at it and stares at it, and then it starts coming after her. So she's going through. Um, let's just take us home here. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's going through it. She's chasing her. It is visually spectacular. She gets to... Oh, we, we didn't even say what. It was like a little like pioneer village. 1864? We don't got no fancy schmancy phone. Yeah, it seemed huh? like oh, it was... What am I doing? What am I doing? Have you seen that South Park episode? Where they go to the pioneer village? Oh, yep. And they refuse to and break they, character. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, yeah. Yeah. and then they start getting robbed, I, but they won't fucking I don't break know character. nothing about no door code. I'm just a simple blacksmith. Kill him. <laughs> Fucking blow his brains out. So they they go. She's in there on the dirt bike. And she starts like we see her just there's something that's staked down. And she's just like cutting it out of the ground on all four corners. And it floats up. And it's this big like inflatable guy. And he's like winking. And it's floating up in the air. There's also they made a point. They did a good job tying it in. Yeah. There, There's this well. 
where you look down, you put a quarter in and you twist it and you're looking it down and it takes a picture. Yeah, she didn't she, realize that was that yeah, in the beginning and she photobombed yeah, some other people. There were people doing it and she went and stood. She's like, what's down there? And so then this, it did and she's like, oh, psh, I'm sorry. This town <laughs> is an entire tourist attraction. Yeah. It's not like a real town where people live. Or at least I don't think. I mean, maybe there's a fucking hotel in there. Huh. I mean, I mean, if if you thought it was a town where people lived, listening to this, then I, I mean, they might have had like a I small got nothing hotel. for you. It was it was yeah, so, so sure they can have an hotel. That's fine. That's yeah. not people live there. No, yeah, that people, is, it's still a tourist attraction. No, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, but I I don't think people. I hope up. no one listening thought like, oh, this is a real town. With, wow, they just with wells <laughs> with yeah. pictures and inflatable guys. Yeah, I guess uh, I felt the need. It's going up in the air. <laughs> And the fucking the UFO thing comes over and it's like, the fuck is this? Yeah. And she keeps doing there's there's coins all over the ground, which they tied it in. They showed earlier that that's a thing. There were the electromagnetic falling. field just yeah. through quarters everywhere. So she was putting them in and twisting it, trying to get the picture. And then it comes in and it just eats the inflatable guy. And she she gets a she gets a great picture of it. And then is it filled with like just oxygen or is that like helium or some shit too like what made it because when the when the balloon explodes it it like really fucks up the ufo the ufo like exploded with it yeah it was which i didn't really understand i i'm guessing just the size of it yeah and it exploded you think it'd be like a fresher for like the fucking ufo you know (laughs) but it was i don't know i guess he was just big enough just a queef floated and then like he exploded the he the ufo explodes too (laughs) And now it's like and, a fucking ribbon in the air. <laughs> yeah, and she's fucking pumped. She's going crazy. And she sees that she got the picture. The police show up. I think that she's about to get killed. And then OJ, like, she looks over and she's smiling. And we see, like, through the dust, he's over, like, just outside the gate on the horse. You know what this is reminding me of, too? That they kind of, not ripped on, but they kind of stole this a little bit from? Django. When Django's at, on the horse at the end. Or no, it's actually the other way around. Django's coming out and there's smoke and he sees his wife on the horse. It's kind of like that. I'm not talking about anything. I mean, just because there's horses and black people. No, because a like, horse. like Django Unchained because that's the only time I've ever seen a black person on a horse. <laughs> black people aren't allowed on horses I knew you're gonna go unless <laughs> it's this movie or Django. So it's the same. They ripped off Django because they had blacks on horses. Well, the, you know what movie's all blacks on horses? The Nutty Professor. Yeah, Eddie Murphy's fucking... He was riding the horse. Yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, so, so to sum this up, they, they don't give... There's nothing else that ends up really happening. They, they don't show the success of getting it on film. They don't show what's to come with the human race finding out what this fucking entity is made of after it's... Be- destroyed it's because the cops killed both of them and they That's, just didn't have and they it just on hid the story camera. yeah yeah um well no they killed both of them because they they had the opportunity to kill black people who were trespassing mm-hmm. That's a and good point. Uh, you you do not pass that up so i think personally if they would have stuck with the aliens and more of the monkey and the, maybe mind control from fucking like a frequency of electromagnetic field of some sort i felt like you could be seeing nope too and they could have expanded on this universe and still kept everything in the horse stable area, like in the farm kind of area, and like still shot it very similarly, like all on kind of like one location. Um, but they could have expanded into the universe. The way that they kill off essentially this this entity, you know, at the end, and they don't show much more. They don't they don't really set anything up for like you know a second movie or and, like and also we're just assuming it's dead yeah we're just assuming we, we it's saw it dead. go from looking like a flying saucer to being this like octopus thing with a bunch of different directions way bigger up in the sky we're just assuming because it's separated that it's now dead but it could be fucking and don't get me wrong i love seeing scenes of like the ufos and everything but i felt like a lot of them were a little too repetitive to where they drawn out those scenes a little too much, which they some of the scenes definitely need to be drawn out to build up the suspense and everything. <laughs> but um, I, I felt like they could have, you know, summed up a little bit more of that and then explained more at the end and would have expanded on the universe that he created. Who was the wrestler? Way off topic. Who was the wrestler? It was like 08, where he'd go, he'd stand in the ring... 
And like, like he'd tell the guy who was announcing him, like, shut the fuck up. And then he'd go stand there, just hold that. And then like an old fashioned microphone it, would fall from the sky. It was, was Mr. It, something. It was Mr. And then he'd say his last name. And then he'd pause. And he'd say his last name again. Yeah, I don't you remember, remember that? I do. I do remember that, that. guy was the fucking man. What's yeah. he up to these oh, days? Man, that'd be great. Oh fuck, Kennedy, yeah, Mister Kennedy. And then he'd pause and he'd go, Kennedy. It's a way and to he'd really throw drive the home. microphone up in the air and like, like they think it's on a string and they're yeah. like pulling it up. Yeah, that guy was great. Yeah, listen, when I answer the ring, you're gonna lower down the mic, hold my hand up, and it's gonna fall like a guy. How he thought of that. Yeah. That's beyond me. Good on him. Good on him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the movie was cool. Definitely out there. I like that he you know, made strong choices to do something that no one's really probably have ever done in the way that he did it, or at least when it dealt with like aliens and stuff, UFOs. But at the same time, I, I, I just, which... Is a little selfish. I kind of wish he would have stayed on like the like the little gray aliens and like expanded the universe more. And yeah, maybe the UFOs can change and, and transform too or something. But I just wish there was more. Is is my point? Yeah, sure. But he also like he introduced a, a pretty entirely new concept. Oh which yeah, is, totally. Which is the alien is one huge singular being. It's not on a ship. It's, yeah, it is the ship. So it would have been tough because, like, I already feel like the movie went long. And sure, they could have just cut scenes shorter, but to also have other stuff and not have this be. Because, like, my biggest complaint about Close Encounters of the Third Kind is that it was two hours and fucking 40 minutes. Yeah. If the, and this was just over two hours. If they added another 20 minutes, oh, yeah. this would have gotten a much lower grade for me. What's funny, too, is when um, the people were being digested, I totally thought, like... Oh, until the scene ended, I was like, oh, we're going to explore the inside of the ship and maybe see aliens. Like, I thought that's kind of like what it was going to go to. And then they just like ended the scene. I'm like, oh, those people just got fucking digested. Yeah, (laughs) those those people are dead. Those people people are not going on a ship. These people were, I mean, it was pretty hard to watch. Like, it's very claustrophobic. They're they're Um, being like pushed up like. They're fucking freaking out while it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's wild. You can hear them screaming. Yeah. From the ship, like. On the ground, they're hearing the people screaming. It's the, and showing it's them the way that they're being sucked up into the ship and stuff. Like there were some pretty cool shots that made you really feel it, and you're like, "Oh fuck, that's kind of scary." Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's nope. That's nope. Yeah, that's nope, guys. So stick around. And we're talking about the future. Yeah, talk about. We're gonna discuss our future together because I. I killed my pregnant wife. I killed my daughters. I'm selling the house. Let's talk about our future. So stick around. And we're back. We're back. So I know I said we were going to talk about the future, but first we got to talk about the past. There was a trailer for a movie that Braden and I both audibly laughed at a part in it. It was, there was this old woman talking to her grandson. Her grandson got expelled from his school. He was at a new school. And she was talking about, like, the school she went to. And she was like, there was this disabled boy. And he, the kid, like, had a crutch. She's a goofy-looking kid. And like, it shows him. He's like, you left this under your desk. And he's like, oh, thanks. And he's like, we're very different people, but we had one thing in common. And then she's showing, like, her drawings to a kid. And the kid goes, like, different kid. He goes, yeah, they're pretty good for a Jew. And then we saw, like, fucking Nazi swastika flags falling on the side of the school. And we were like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? Dude. I forget what it was called. I forget what it was supposed to be. But it it was, like, it caught me so off guard. White bird. <laughs> Is that what it's called? White Bird? I'm, I'm almost <laughs> positive it was called... I'm 99% positive it's called White, White Bird. White Bird. Check it out. Yeah. It was so... There, there was no... So, like, she's like, we had one thing in common. I was like, oh, her and the goofy disabled kid are both very good artists or something. And then, so like, no, we're both Jewish, <laughs> and it's Nazi Germany, and things are about to get real bad for us. Yeah. Fucking wild. Yeah. You know what movie's got zero Jews, as all movies should?
Oh. The Nutty Professor. The Nutty Professor. There's not a Jew in the movie. There yeah. wasn't a Jew on the writing staff. There wasn't a Jew producer. No Jews even went and saw it. Yeah, it took me a Perfect second, movie. Yeah. You know what other movie? I don't know. It might have Jews. There's only like three actors in it, so, you know, it's, it's not it's not possible. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not a high probability, but you know what? Even, I'm saying it's not a high probability, and the main actor who's the most famous might be a Jew. Oh, God damn it, David. It's 10 Cloverfield Lane <laughs> with John Goodman. John Goodman, you a Jew? I don't think so, but it could be. 10 Cloverfield Lane with John Goodman and two other people. It's a good movie. Yeah. Want to watch 10 Cloverfield Lane before we do a podcast on 10 Cloverfield Lane? You should. You should watch 10 Cloverfield Lane before we do a podcast on 10 Cloverfield Lane. Here's where you can. Let them know. Watch 10 Cloverfield Lane before we do a podcast on 10 Cloverfield Lane. You know, I don't want to let them know now. No? Because you said let them know. Oh, I'm gonna. I was trying is to hype it up. Is there a chance I'm going to do all that and then not tell them? Is there a chance? I'm going to be like, we'll go figure it out. Maybe. That's what you do. It's available on YouTube, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon Prime for two ninety nine, or it's available on Apple TV for three ninety nine. That's 10 Cloverfield Lane starring John Goodman. Crazy fucking film. So, Braden, you know, we went we went and did Nope because, you know, it was, it was kind of your pick. It was joint pick. Yeah. But it was me. You've been like, like oh, my, my, my buddy Braden's been like stoked about this movie for months. So yeah. I'm like, you know, we have a podcast where we can go see this movie and talk about it together. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. We did it. Yeah, we did American Murder because I, I just love pregnant women and children getting murdered. I mean, and I was like, let's. I can't get enough of it. I need it. Let's watch it. Yeah. But let's say someone's watching this right now. Someone's listening to this right now, and they're like, man, I loved hearing them do Nope. I can't wait to hear them do 10 Cloverfield Lane, but I want them to do my favorite movie. <sighs> David. Sprint, how would they go about telling us to do their favorite movie? They just got to go to our website, 56kings.com. Hold on. So F I V E S I X. K I N G S dot com. Yep. And what? Like, I mean, up at the top on the toolbar, is there like a tab that says submit ideas or something? That's spot on. And like, you can go click submit ideas, and then there's just a, it's a page where you type in your idea, and we get alerted that there was an idea submitted. You type it in, and you click submit, and then we get it. I mean, what, like, that just sounds so easy. So it user sounds friendly. idiotic not to do it. And, yep. like, what else on that website? Are there bios about the Five Six Kings? Oh, and man. Can you... they buy merch? Like, hey, here's the original. I'm not even wearing the What Up, What Up t-shirt. You can buy both of these shirts that are on here. And if you push for a What Up, What Up t-shirt, I'll fucking make it happen. Make it happen. I'm not going to be like, no, you can't have a What Up, What Up t-shirt. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Figure it the fuck out. Can they buy stuff on there? David, they can buy shit. They can check out our past episodes. I mean, dude, the possibilities are almost endless. I mean, they're not, but they're almost. They're endless. They're endless. They are endless. <laughs> yes. Possibilities are endless on the Five Six Kings. We're the promise keepers. We make dreams come true on the on Five Six Kings. Dot com. That's right, David. And Brayden, when can they check out new episodes of the Five Six Kings? David, when are they available? Every motherfucking Monday. Every motherfucking Monday? Every motherfucking Monday. Well, fuck, guys. You heard it here. Five Six Kings dot com. New episodes every motherfucking Monday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you all very much. Peace out. Bitch, I